Hello there book friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Megan and today is Autism Awareness Day, the day that I am going to be posting this video. And because of that fact, I wanted to post a video talking about books with autistic main characters. So as you can see from the title, that's what this video is going to be about. The reason I really wanted to make this video is because I wanted to celebrate the autistic representation that we get in literature, no matter how limited it is. I still think that this is something that we should be talking about more and it's something that I definitely would love to see in literature more. Also, I myself am high functioning autistic. I have uh, Asperger's syndrome or PDD-NOS, which stands for Progressive Development Disorder, not otherwise specified. Yes, that is a mouthful. That's why we have the acronym. PDD and OS. And because of that, I love to read about books with autistic characters, but I haven't found too many that I have liked. And I only own two books with autistic characters that it is actually mentioned in it where they are autistic. And I could definitely do a long discussion talking about autistic representation in literature, but I might just save that for another video. But for this video, I'm going to be talking about a few books that I have read that feature autistic main characters and then a few books that I haven't gone around to reading that have autistic characters in them. And I have done a little bit of research and made sure that the books that I've chosen for this don't really have any harmful stereotypes towards autistic people. So the first book that I have that I want to show you is one that I have talked about on my channel before and it is a fairly newer release and it's one that I absolutely loved. I gave it five stars because I had no real issues with it and that is the Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed. As you can see I have a million tabs because I kept putting tabs in this book uh, at spots that really hit me and really resonated on me on a level that a lot of other books really haven't. This one I'll say that there are some trigger warnings and that it deals with rape culture and sexual assault so just be warning that that is in this book. In this book we have three different main characters. One of them is Erin and she is the autistic main character in this book and the other two a plus size teenager and a queer teenager and then Erin herself has Asperger's syndrome and I've never read a book with an autistic character in it that has done things that I have actually done in my real life and has had thoughts that I have had and it just it hit me on such a deep level and so many things in this book that I loved so much. And one of the things is that she just mentions that being an autistic female is it is a lot different than being um, male. You have to you're quieter about it and you learn more. You learn how to blend in more to society. Because of that, a lot of autistic uh, girls or women go undiagnosed for their life because they just learned how to blend in and to be shy and try to go unnoticed. So the representation in this book was just fantastic. And one of the things that I love about Erin as well is that she loves Star Trek, and in particular her favorite one is Star Trek The Next Generation. She really resonates with Data, who is her favorite character, and Data was always one of my favorite characters as well, because Data always wanted to learn more more about other people and try to understand what it means to be human, and Erin on a level understands this because she also really wants to figure out what it means to be human and try to understand other people's emotions and what goes on around her. It's something that is difficult for autistic people to um, read facial expressions and always know what's going on. There was one sentence in here that I love is that people assume that because Erin is autistic that she doesn't feel what other people are feeling and that she, she doesn't get the emotions and she doesn't empathize with people but she just says that no she feels everything she feels all of it and that's the problem because sometimes it's too much and i just love erin's character and how strong she has to be and and how her character is portrayed and the author did an amazing job with actually portraying autism well in this book and i love the fact that her whole life is in focus on the fact that she's autistic and there are just so many things about it that i love and i could talk about this book forever because it was so good it also deals with rape culture and and sexism specifically in america and these three girls band together to fight against that. And this book just was so powerful and hit me on so many different levels. Um, but I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a book that features um, an autistic character. And I haven't read any books that have ever quite hit me like this one has. So this one is the first one that I wanted to talk about because I just felt like it hit me on so many levels. It was just done so well. The next book and the last book that I have read and that I own 
that has an autistic character in it that is Rules by Cynthia Lord. I think it's marketed like ages 9 to 12 and I, I think I read it around that time. And it's been years since I've read this book so I don't remember the exact plot and all the details. But I know that this is from the point of view of a 12 year old girl. Here, I'll just read the blurb at the back. A 12 year old Catherine just wants a normal life which is near impossible when you have a brother with autism and a family that revolves around his disability. She spent years trying to teach David the rules from a peach is not a funny looking apple to keep your pants on in public in order to head off David's embarrassing behaviors. But the summer Catherine meets Jason, a surprising new sort of friend, and Christy, the potential next door friend she's always wished for. It's her own shocking behavior that turns everything upside down and forces her to ask, what is normal? a brief summary like I said it's been a while since I've read this book but I do remember really enjoying it and that it was done really well although I would have liked to have seen the POV from the brother's point of view which we don't get in this novel so in this book get a see from the sister's point of view and she describes what it is like to have an autistic brother and how she pretty much always has to take care of him and she has a set of rules for him to help him uh, avoid embarrassing himself and having anxiety attacks in public. Her life and her parents' life are more of focused taking care of her brother. And I appreciate stories like this, but I really wish that we could have seen some things from his point of view. Overall, this was a cute, funny story meant for kids that demonstrates the effect uh, that having an autistic kid can have on an entire family. And the next book that I want to recommend is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And this is a book that I haven't read. I definitely have not read enough books with autistic MCs and I really want to read more books. And in this one we have Christopher who is a 15 year old boy and this one is marketed as a little bit of a mystery because a dog is murdered and he uses his brains to try and figure out who murdered the dog by copying Sherlock Holmes who is his favorite detective. Like a lot of autistic people he's very intelligent and he loves math and numbers and knows like every prime number up to 7,000 or some random number um and i haven't read this one but i looked up some reviews on goodreads and what people had been saying about this book there's a few people who didn't like it and say that the mystery element was kind of um hyped up a little bit too much and that it's mostly more about christopher and seeing things from his point of view and his way of looking at the world is something that tends to draw me in more because i like to read books more with that are more character driven than say plot driven so this is a book that i want to eventually check out and see if i like it that is the third book on my list that i want to recommend for you guys and then the next book that i want to recommend is mockingbird by katherine erkston in this book the autistic main character we have is caitlin and she is a an 11 year old she's an 11 year old girl and she has her has her older brother Devin who helps her out with navigating the real world until he is killed in a school shooting and then she has to deal with the grief and try to figure out how to cope and how to deal with everyday normal life situations without her brother and that just sounds like a really interesting book to me it sounds sad but also as if it deals with really relevant issues in today's society it just sounds really emotional and like this would be a really good novel to read so this is another one that i'm interested in and i wanted to put this on my list and then the next book that i want to talk about is marcello in the real world and in this one, our autistic main character is Marcelo, and he hears music that no one else can hear as a part of his autism or something. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but that's one thing that makes him a little bit different from everybody else. And he also goes to a special school for autistic people until one day his father decides that he wants to send him out into the real world. And he has him work at a mailroom in the summer, and then he plans on sending him to a mainstream high school for his last year or two of high school, which seems like a really stupid thing to do. But we follow him on his journey of trying to go outside his little, his little bubble and work at a regular job. And he also makes some friends along the way. And there is a little bit of romance in this novel as well, which is always kind of nice to see with autistic characters because, because some people think that, oh, you know, you can't get Autistic characters don't get a romantic partner because they're too socially awkward. And I love to see autistic characters 
get a romantic partner and it just makes me so happy. I was on Goodreads reading people's review of this book and Maggie Stiefvater actually gave it five stars and said that she loved it a lot so that made me have to put it on the list and it just sounds like something that would be really interesting that I want to eventually get to around to reading. The next book that I want to recommend is Anything But Typical by Nora Baskin. This one we follow an autistic character named Jason and he is 12 years old and he spends a lot of his time online and on this fanfiction website and he does a lot of writing and he meets someone who's with a, who goes by the name of Phoenix Bird and her real name is Jessica and he wants to meet her in real life but he's afraid that if he does she'll only see his autism and not see who he really is and that kind of got my attention right off the bat there. I already connect with him because I spend a lot of my time on the internet and I read fan fiction and, and I have several online friends so that is something that I definitely connected with right off the bat just reading the blurb of this book and I've seen that a lot of people really enjoyed it and that autism representation in this book is done really well so from what I have read and seen from other people so I'm looking forward to reading eventually and then we're going on to the last book that i'm going to recommend for this video um how to look for a lost dog this is by ann martin and this follows an 11 year old girl named rosie and i'm just going to read the little blurb off my computer here and it pretty much says that 11 year old rose is autistic and struggles to understand her classmates but when her father gives her a stray dog which she names rain the dog becomes her best friend her anchor in a confusing world so when rain goes missing during a storm, Rose refuses to stop looking for her. This one sounds short and sweet. I always love books that have dogs in them and that deal with how, and, and that talk about how animals can help uh, people with disabilities or children in general, because animals are always a great comfort, especially dogs. And I read what some other people have said about this book because I myself haven't read it, and that it seems a cute, funny, and touching story about love, loss, and uh, how animals can connect to children and help them um, with their struggles. That has been all the books that I've recommended. In total, it was only seven books. There are other books out there with autistic characters in them, and I encourage you to go look it up if you're interested. Those are just a few books that I've read or that I came across and thought sounded interesting and wanted to talk about them, and I also think that we should have more autistic representation in literature. It's something that is still sorely lacking. That's all for now, so <laughs> thank you for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down to my channel if you want more bookish content from me. And thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. Bye!